February 15th, 2018, uh, Omaha, Nebraska. This is Sasha. This is Andy's 1997 Dodge Ram 2500 Heavy Duty. Comes turbo diesel here. It's uh, 231,330 miles. I'll be doing a little bit of work on it this week, uh, next few days anyway. Uh, we're here for uh, Taylor's Leadership School graduation and then uh, we'll be flying back to Idaho on the uh, evening of the 18th. So a couple days to try to get some stuff done. So there had been some work done on it before Andy bought it. The guy had done some modifications but uh, a couple more things we're going to do. Try to get done this week. So we've got the uh, heater plugged in. It's been uh, some pretty cold days, pretty cold nights here in uh, Omaha. But uh, yeah, immediately uh, some things that we're going to be looking at is somewhere down here uh, we've got an exhaust leak. So see that flex pipe because all the way back here let's see if we can't get in right there the flex pipe has come out of the uh, stacks so I'm gonna have to uh, fix that which shouldn't be too hard. Got the stacks that go up there. Uh, we're gonna also do rear differential fluid. Gonna drain that, redo it. Uh, let's see what else. Transfer case fluid, transmission fluid. We've got a uh, Bypass, uh, AMS oil bypass filter to uh, put on the uh, put on it. Got the correct version for that. Install that, and then uh, do front differential as well as a uh, probably an oil change. Front differential there. Transfer case there. Should be pretty straightforward. Uh, transmission but uh, yeah first things first we're gonna adjust this and uh, take care of it so Okay, so we got got the exhaust fixed, at least to some degree. So the flexi pipe. Let's see. We're gonna get it back in focus here. There we go. Flexi pipe there. Got to put back together. Turns out it was broke. Just passed where the uh, clamp there was at. But got it put back in. It's mostly stable, but it's not a perfect solution. We're gonna have to just figure out a long-term fix for that, which might be to go ahead and do it the right way, because it looks like flex pipe, well, I have my opinion about flex pipe. Shouldn't be, oh, what is that, about six feet long, maybe? Five feet? Small, smaller sections probably is best for it for long term solutions. So, yeah, we'll get that long term taken care of later. So, let's move on to the next part. Alright, so the AMS oil bypass filter. 
remove the installing. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Amsoil bypass filter we're gonna be installing is going to come up and go into the right here engine oil fill the port that comes in there. But then it's gonna come off of the engine oil pressure sensor or pressure switch which we're going to have to find in here uh, not extremely familiar with the uh, big diesels here but I'm going to be getting there Okay, so we've made, I've made the first. If I can get it to focus in there. That is the first of four ends to the uh, hydraulic hose for the Emsoil bypass filter. I've already put it together, but what it is, this part counterclockwise screws onto the hose. Until he bottoms out. That was a 7 8 inch uh, socket, just use that. And this is a barbed uh, fitting that goes slides in, uh, lube it up a little bit to help to ease it in, <clears throat> and then it screws in. Used the 9 16th slides on there, and just did that until it bottomed out right there. <clears throat> And uh, there it is. Got the reflection on there. It's keeping it from focusing in real well. <clears throat> but that's the first of them. What I'll do is I'll connect that up to the uh, truck once we get it start going. I uh, will uh, figure out where we're going to mount the bypass filter, and then we'll run it. Figure out the length of the hose, cut it, take it off, connect that end, uh, attach that end to it. Okay, it is the uh, Saturday, 17th of February. A couple days later, uh, yesterday was in the 30s. So today you got the uh, AMS oil bypass filter working on it. It's just uh, in the settings so I still got to take everything off seal it tighten them up tighten them down uh, but uh, this is the return line you see it runs down got to go down here comes around and connects into the bypass filter so this is our decided to set it to the cross member here. Uh, out of the way, kind of protect it. Tighten that down. This is the input line. So this uh, I have set up. I got this end, the hose done, and brought it up. It'll come up around this way, up in, and go up there. Okay. Alright folks, uh, yesterday the uh, battery died on the camera, so I had to uh, get her charged, so I went ahead and finished the install, the bypass, got to clean up the zip ties, but see there's the return line, routed it out so it doesn't get any rubbing areas, uh, runs down, there. Okay. So come down around. There's the bolt smelling. Actual bypass filter. I'll write the date and everything on there, but it's actually written on the other side. Pass filters installed, set up. 
This is the uh, in. This is the uh, this is the in line. This is the out. It has a uh, petcock to be able to do a test uh, kit. So all you gotta do is hold the jar, uh, the test kit jar up, open it up, drain fluid in for the test, close it up, seal that up, ship it off, and get an idea of how well your oil is holding up. Uh, very good to be able to extend out those drain intervals. So as you can see here, again, more zip ties I gotta clear out. Runs out, it stays out of the way. If anything sharp or hot, it's out of the way of the engine, out of the way of the flywheel. It comes up, <clears throat> routes around. This is the input side, and kind of see it right up there. See the uh, where it connects in at the uh, oil pressure sensor. So that's set up. I got an extension going into the port coming out. And it's got a, a T. The sensor comes off the part of the T, and then the uh, line comes off. So the sensor is reestablished, and it's still a straight shot coming out to the sensor. So, discovered we have a, an injector leaking. I'll have to take care of that here a little bit. Right now I'm going to finish up doing the uh, uh, oil change. So, alright, we'll be back. Alright folks, so, this is what we're going to be putting into the uh, 97 Ram 2500 heavy duty uh, Cummins 5.9 liter turbo diesel uh, also known as Sasha so it is calls for almost uh, three gallons of diesel so we're going to be putting in the uh, newest synthetic uh, by oil for diesels 15w40 this is the uh, standard filter that will go on, or will be going in. 20 micron filter. It is the EA080. And then we've also installed the bypass filter. So this is the EA VP90 uh, for the number of quarts that the uh, truck calls for. This will work, and this comes down to two microns. Uh, very, it's a little bit windy around here. It's uh, February 18th, so very high efficiency. So we'll be able to clean this up. Hopefully, keep this uh, truck running. It's at 231,330 miles today. So uh, let's go ahead and we'll press on with this oil change. I've already pulled all the uh, uh, oil out, drained it, uh, got the filter. So we'll go ahead and uh, put some oil into the primary filter, uh, put that back in, and then we'll top her off with oil. Again, we'll go to uh, 11 quarts. Uh, probably take all full 12 quarts because we've added the uh, the bypass. So it's gonna it's gonna take a lot of oil here. So thanks for watching.